actual stress of it. Hello, and welcome back to Kojo Chronicles. If you're new here, my name is Daisy, and I'm feeling very fetching today in my dungas. And I'm on a mission to create myself the most magical, sparkly, fantasy dresses of my wildest dreams. Because if you're anything like me, you definitely can't afford to buy one. Last episode was for all the glitter magpies out there. I tried and failed to learn how to tambour bead, and I went to the best place on earth, a bead shop, and bought myself a veritable hoard of glittery, sparkly beads. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check that out right here. And if you're new to the series, why don't you hop into episode number one? Before we dive in, a big shout out to all my lovely subscribers. Thank you for being here with me. One subscriber got in touch last week to say she was watching on a big screen with her mum, which is so sweet. And I love hearing from you all. So please don't be afraid to say hi if you want to. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any of the action. Today's episode is definitely not as glamorous as last week's, but I think it's really important that you know this step before we start cracking on with the final dress. So, without further ado, let's crack on with finalising the pattern in episode number six. We've been doing a bit of time jumping in the last video, so just to clarify where we're at, we're currently looking at the twirl on the day after the opera. The twirl fits me really well. The only issue I had when wearing the twirl was the back fastenings. They distorted and snapped. So apart from buying new back fastenings, I'm really happy that this pattern works and it's gonna look fabulous. There were adjustments that I needed to make to the twirl to make it fit me. So now I'll need to readjust the paper pattern to make sure that all of those changes carry forward into the final dress. What I'm doing today is I'm taking a giant orange marker and really chunkily outlining all of the pieces of the twirl. Again, taking special care to mark up all of the pleats and then unpicking them so that I end up with a pile of dress pieces all marked up with orange. Then laying one of the white twirl pieces out on the table nice and flat, I can then place the corresponding paper pattern piece over the top and see where there are any differences between the paper pattern lines and the orange marker and then I can adjust the paper pattern accordingly. There weren't too many drastic changes to the pattern. The front geometric panel has definitely got bigger <laughs> because I thought it looked better. And I did shrink the bottom of the top section where the ribs were so that we lost some of that excess, considering how conservative I'm gonna need to be when cutting out the silk. Happy with the final pattern. It's now time to be brave and get out the final fabric. I am so nervous about working with this fabric. Even if it wasn't expensive, I just do not have the excess to be making any mistakes. My stress levels went up another notch when I got the fabric out of its packaging and found that it was beyond creased. The thought of ironing this is petrifying. In a, in a, in a fit of sheer delusion, I hung the fabric up with a coat hanger uh, in the vain hope that just by hanging it the creases would drop out and I buried my head in the sand for a couple of days praying that that would work. It didn't, I think it would need to be hanging for months for that to work. So I did have to bite the bullet and get the ironing board out. I turned the iron onto the lowest possible setting. There is no chance in hell I am going to risk burning a hole in this. And to be extra safe, I put another layer of fabric over the top to make sure that no gunk from the iron transferred onto the silk. I didn't damage the silk, but I'm not sure I ironed it correctly either because it's still rather creamy. 
wrinkled. I think part of the reason is, is because I'm trying to iron such a large piece of fabric. It's just getting crinkled as I sort of move it along and it's sort of sitting there in a big steamy pile. And I think it might be a bit more successful if I cut all the pattern pieces out and then ironed each individual piece. However, in order to do that successfully, I need to make sure that the fabric is sufficiently uncrinkled enough to make sure that the pattern pieces don't cut out wonky. It's a chicken or egg situation. My next tactic is to store it with some tension by wrapping it around a pole, a bit like how they store fabric anyway on those tubes in fabric shops. And I kind of wish that John Lewis had just plonked it back on the original tube because I did buy the end of the roll. Anyway, note for next time, if I'm buying the end piece of fabric, Let's keep the tube. My house is in a constant state of DIY, so I did manage to find this pole in the garden. It's a bit mucky, but after engaging some brain cells, I figured I could just wrap it with cling film and it'd be fine. Pole all set, ready to go. I take the tinsiest bit of edge to the pole to keep damage to a minimum. Then I start the process of wrapping my fabric around the pole as tight as I can and finishing it off with a couple of pins so it doesn't move anywhere. Fingers crossed that this has the effect that I want it to have. Luckily, I've got plenty of beading to be getting on with and I'm away for the weekend. So the fabric has a solid four days to sit there and tension out those creases as much as possible. And with that, that is all of the prep for the final dress is done. There is nothing else I can do to procrastinate and put off making the final dress. I just have to get on with it. So with that, I'll see you next week where I finally bite the bullet and cut into the expensive fabric. Oh my heart, the actual stress of it. In the meantime, keep being fabulous and I will see you next week. Bye. I'm looking fabulous wearing my dungas. Uh, <laughs> Someone's going past with their bin. Rude. The corresponding pattern paper, the paper pattern piece. Just. Ba -ba 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 -ba